Hi, everybody. Welcome to All Elite Wrestling's Unrestricted, the official AEW podcast. Tony Schiavone. Aubrey and my longtime close personal friend, Aubrey Edwards. How are you Long doing, Long time. Aubrey? Long time. We've yeah. known each other like eight months. Since October. That's right. But it, but it's like we've known each other our entire lives. Forever. Yeah. I love you, man. Oh, I love you. Thank you. Okay. You know who else I Podcast love? Podcast is over. What's that? I'm sorry. You know who else I love? Who's that? Chris Statlander. Yeah. Hey, 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 Chris. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So today on AEW Unrestricted, we have uh, the galaxy's greatest alien, Chris Statlander, uh, one of my absolute favorite people to work with. Um, you've you've done a crazy amount of stuff on the indies, like I think ROH, Impact, Shimmer, um, AAW Women's Champion, Creative Pro Wrestling, uh, mm-hmm. TV Champion, Victory Pro Wrestling Women's Champion. God, this list is so long. Uh, PWI's uh, number one hundred. That was a mistake because Kyrie Sane mistake. was Kyrie Sane was left off the list, and she was supposed to be like number nine. So I would have been one hundred and one. <laughs> so I wasn't well, too supposed bad. to be. I was too bad for her. <laughs> so yeah. PWI's uh, list of top 101 women. You were number 101. There we go. Yeah. So you've you've you're kind of crazy. Like you've done a lot of stuff in a short amount of time, especially for someone yeah. who didn't watch wrestling as a kid. Mm hmm. Yeah. I don't know how it happened. I just yeah. kind of I feel I guess I feel like it was just kind of like it was the way I was supposed to do things. So I just didn't feel any point in holding back or like trying to find any longevity i just did everything i could went everywhere i could and it got me a lot of recognition apparently so hey chris uh you started uh you were a stunt double correct uh, what got you interested in that line of work um well i was in college freshman year at my you know the age you're supposed to be in college at right after <laughs> high school <laughs> and I was there for athletic training and physical therapy. And I finished up my one year, my first year, but halfway through, I was like, I really don't want to do this anymore. Uh, I hate school. I'm so done with it. And then I was like, just thinking about like, if I could do a dream job for like two weeks, what would it be? And stunt double was the first thing that came to mind because mm-hmm. I was a gymnast my whole life. Uh, I was just a real big fan of physical activities and being an idiot. So I was just like, I'm going to look into it. So I found a place in Brooklyn called Hollywood Stunts NYC. And I started training there for, it was a three week intensive and it was over the summer. So I think it was, it was in July, I remember. And the training was nine to five, Monday through Friday. And I had to drive from out east on Long Island all the way to Brooklyn in morning traffic traffic on the way there traffic on the way back so it took like two hours to drive one way both so it was like a four and a half hour drive every single day over the summer uh i'd have to wake up at like 6 a.m to do this every single day and i was so worn out and i was the only student and this uh this like school is kind of like a warehouse on the river on like the east river of brooklyn so it's like a wrestling training school <laughs> it's basically yeah except it's a yeah. lot it's a lot taller no air conditioning nothing mm. and again like i was the only student so i was worn out completely and i just loved every single second of it there was not a single day i didn't want to wake up and drive down there and i finally like for the first time in my life i felt like i found something i was supposed to do so what is the so. training like what are you doing from nine to five so there's some like stretching, obviously some warm up drills, and whatnot. But uh, so the first two weeks of the training, week one was unarmed combat. So you're kind of so I actually learned how to do like your roles uh, at stunts. Hmm. So I knew how to do roles before I um, started wrestling, which is why my first day at wrestling, everyone's like, "Oh my god, you train somewhere else?" And I was like, "Nope." Uh, But so we did like basic roles, learning how to fall, um, which it's very different than wrestling. Uh, But they were kind of, and I remember, I think it was like my second or third day. They're like, oh, you think you're rolling correctly. Why don't we just go roll on the concrete gravel outside? And I had like bruises all over my back because I wasn't doing it right. And then they're like, oh, let's try it again on the inside. So I had to roll on AstroTurf, which was just right on top of concrete. So it wasn't really anything better after I already bruised up and scraped up my back and then we were back onto the mats and I was like, okay, now I know how to roll. But 
so the first week was unarmed combat, just like your basic fight scenes. Second week was armed, so we learned how to do sword fighting, knife fighting. Um, we learned how to shoot blanks. And uh, the third week was like all the cool fun stuff. Like we did full body fire burns, car hits, high falls, uh, like wire work. When you see people like, uh, if there's like an explosion, you see a person fly back. We got to do that, the air repel. Yeah, so it's like all, all like the fun Sweet. stuff. So <laughs> but yeah, you're doing that like eight hours a day and your body is destroyed. Yeah, but I mean, you're it literally was, on fire. <laughs> yeah, it was... <laughs> I've been on fire, I think, three or four times, and it is so fun. I think it's mm, that's the so. funnest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> do you, uh, for something like this, do you have to sign any waiver or anything yeah, uh, for absolutely. injuries? Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. That sounds like, mm -hmm. so uh, you, you trained as a stunt double. What was your first uh, job as a stunt double? So with stunts, you actually have to join the SAG after union in order to be right. able to perform them on TV and movies. So I never really got to do any stunt doubling for like an actual TV set, but I mm -hmm. did, uh, we had a couple of things come to the school that I got to be a part of where I did like a doubling for a news reporter at the school. Um, uh, we did this thing. Uh, Jerry O'Connell came to the school and, uh, he was kind of doing something for Amazon IMDb. So I got to teach him how to do rappelling, like when you do like the scaling down a mountain type thing. So I got to teach right, him right. how to do that. Um, and I was on MTV once. They uh, they did this prank show called um, Ladylike. It was on for one season and I was in the season finale where it was like a speed dating type setting. And one of the actresses got like obsessed with one of the guys in the speed dating. So when it, it was kind of like her and the other actress started like fighting, I went up to the person and I, I went up to the guy and I was like, what's going on? Do you know this person? What's happening? He's like, I don't know anything. And then the actress came and it like broke a table over me. Fun. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm sure it's probably not on the uh, MTV website, but it's on my Instagram. I, I recorded a video of me getting hit with the Sweet. table. And it was so funny because it was so hard not to just like start laughing about, at everybody because everyone was like, oh my God, call the ambulance. Somebody get a doctor. Oh my God, well, this bitch is crazy. And then <laughs> it was so funny because right after the, um, the girl hit me with the table, Everyone's freaking out, and she goes up to the guy that she got obsessed with, and she's like, "You want to get lunch?" <laughs> 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 but we well, obviously told everyone it was a prank, and that I'm a professional stunt person, so I did get to do some stuff, but it costs a lot of money to join the SAG after union, which I didn't have the time. Which I will tell you, by the way, how much it costs. So your initiation fee, once you get eligible to join the union it's three thousand dollars what right but then you have to pay another 206 for like your biannual fees so it's thirty two hundred dollars just to join sag mm -hmm. which i am eligible to do and that never goes away and now that i have more money i am considering doing it but not right now because nothing's happening at the moment but i do have the money now <laughs> yeah. to do it so that's why uh i never really got to do anything for TV, but I am eligible to join the union now. Sweet. So, so you got to do, got to learn all the stunt stuff, didn't get mm -hmm. to do anything for TV, but then before that you were a gymnast for 11 years. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get to compete or travel? Like any opportunities come out of that? Yeah, uh, I wasn't the best gymnast. I am full 100% okay with admitting that because I, I used to be believe it or not, like the smallest kid in class for a long time. And then like eighth grade, I grew like almost two feet. Like I had a huge growth spurt mm -hmm. from like eighth to ninth grade. And uh, my body just couldn't really adjust to it. And being tall is not really ideal for gymnastics. So I kind of got super limited and like trying to retrain my body how to do gymnastics. But I did uh, get to... I competed all the time for gymnastics. I actually was on my, with my club gymnastics, which is like the regular outside stuff. I also was on my high school's varsity team from seventh grade to senior year, 
which I know oh. doesn't make sense, but we didn't have a middle school team. So we only, right. so I had to, I had to try out for varsity in seventh grade. And I was on, so I did varsity for six Damn. years on top of doing outside gymnastics. So just Dang. being crazy and like nonstop training and go, go, go. is just like been something that's been a part of my life for a long time now. And I'm just used to it, which is why I just do like three hour workouts now in the garage. So I'm right. stupid. <laughs> Well, I covered uh, for many years the University of Georgia gym dogs mm -hmm. and covered uh, gymnastics, and I can tell that that you're a former gymnast. I just can mm -hmm. tell how those girls act. Yeah, they're crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I mean they are. They're just they're another breed. Yeah. I mean they're so super athletic and just tough and and rambunctious and weird. Yeah. So oh, yeah, yep. you fit all of that. <laughs> right. Weird big time. That's me. <laughs> right. So we got gymnasts. Stunt yes. double. Correct. Where does wrestling come in? Um, so in my one year of college that I for athletic trading school, it was in New Jersey. And while I was there, we every no matter what your major is, you always have to take some sort of liberal arts class. So I took mm -hmm. an acting class for some reason. Uh, and there was actually a indie wrestler in that class that we became friends with because we were both kind of just like, Oh, we don't want to be here. Blah, blah, blah. You're just like taking that. it because it's a requirement. Blah, exactly. Blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. So we became friends. And at the end of the year, I was like, Hey, I'm not going to be coming back to college anymore. I'm actually going to be going to school for stunt doubling. And he knew that I lived on long Island and he was like, Oh, well we come to long Island occasionally to do shows. So since you're doing the stunt doubling stuff, why don't we see if you can like bring you in as a as a manager or something? And I was like, okay. So eventually, uh so I ended that in uh I ended school in May of two thousand fourteen. I'm young, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh yeah, I did my stunt training in July of two thousand fourteen and then by like September, October ish, uh, I went to my first ever wrestling show and I was a manager. And they had to get, they made me get in the ring and do a promo about, because they're starting this whole women's division thing. And I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing here. I don't oh want to get in this ring. So, yeah. So I was just kind of like, they kind of had me, and they knew I could like get a little bit more physical with stuff because I had some of the, the stunt training, even though it's nothing the same. Uh, but so that, so I was doing that managing for like two years, still not having any clue about wrestling. So from 2014 to 2016, I was like, I was just, just managing, had still not watching wrestling, having no idea really what it's about. And in March, I think March 14th, 2000. 16, I went to a creative pro wrestling show because I made a bunch of friends at the compute at the place that one that one place VPW on Long Island and I was friends with them at Facebook and I saw this creative pro place and I was like oh I'm gonna go to this show just to surprise them just like be a friend and it turns out it was a school uh, we all went out to dinner that night after and I was like I think I want to try this. Why not? So I emailed them and then that, so that was a Sunday. And then that Tuesday, March, uh, what day is St. Patrick's day? That's the 17th, 17th. Right? Okay. So March, uh, okay. So I don't, maybe March 12th or March 13th was the creative pro show. March 15th was my first day. It so was my first day of trading. And then I, I only know that because it was the week after the show. The 15th was my first day in the ring training. The 16th, we did a tape review of the show that happened. And the 17th, we didn't have any training because it was St. Patrick's Day. And Pat and Brian are both Irish. So, <laughs> so, we, but so I remember that very vividly. So, yeah, that's kind of how I got into wrestling, which makes no sense at all. Yeah, we all have different weird I know. paths into it. I know. Yeah, everybody's got a journey getting here. They yeah. really do. It kind of yeah. makes sense that like your path is weird because that's kind yeah. of like who you are. Like if your yeah. path was normal, that wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> I know, but I just happen to find something and I just apparently am actually good at it for some reason. Mm. So one of the things yeah. you mentioned early on uh, mm. in your stunt double training is like falling, doing stunts and falling and wrestling is very different. Yeah. Like, is there anything you had to relearn or reteach your body? Not really. 
Um, not that I had to reteach. It's more just like learning a different. I I viewed it as learning a different thing. Gotcha. So like the roles were the same, but doing a fall and stunt is like very like majestic and like you go down by your knee and then you fall to your hip and then roll to your side and then I'll lay all the way down. <laughs> and then but wrestling, <laughs> bumping, you just kind of like, Gah! you just go. So yeah. it's basically I, tr- I try to separate the two. Uh, and I try to just the only I think the biggest pro or the biggest issue with um, going from stunts to wrestling is strikes like punches mm. kicks stuff like that like stunts there's no contact at all so you can throw it as hard as you want you can be a foot away because it's all camera angles but in wrestling it's right there in person you gotta you gotta co- make contact so it's not it that's been my biggest struggle was like getting okay with touching someone which i know is a struggle for everybody but it that that was the hardest thing the hardest transition between those two so are you stiff in the ring i mean do you when you hit do you really hurt people i try not to uh (laughs) okay but i also when i was training i kind of had this view of myself not to like fade out like feminism or anything but I remember there was always certain things like it's like, oh, there's the more female way to do an up and over or you could do it the guy way or there's more female way. And I in my brain, my stupid brain, I related that to like in gymnastics where it's like if you so in each level, there's a certain type of moveset that you have to have. And you have to um, if you don't do a specific skill but you do a similar one that's a little bit easier you don't start at a 10.0 you would start at like a 9.8 or a 9.5 so in my brain i'm like well if i'm doing my girl version of things i'm already starting myself at a lower tier than what Mm -hmm. people are going to be expecting so why would i do that i'm just going to go for it the guy way hell yeah guy way so that's how i took to my training and i a lot of people say I wrestle like a guy more than a girl, mm-hmm. which I like to try and think I do. But I just kind of say I wrestle, you know. But everyone at training is always just like, lay your strikes in, lay your strikes in, lay your strikes in. Don't make it look weak. Don't don't have those crappy little girl wimpy shots. Just lay it in. Make it look real. And I was just like, so I apologize to anyone if I've ever been stiff in the ring. Uh, that's just how I was told to be. So I try to like tone it back. Nothing wrong with being stiff in the ring. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. It's uh, called working snug. Yeah. Hey, old school, dad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We're we're talking with Chris. Yeah, we're talking with Chris Statlander. We're going to talk about the alien and talk about the alien landing at AEW as we continue. So let's talk about uh, the alien wrestling's debut on the indie scene with Chris Statlander, who is now with us in her human form. Hi. Hey, how did the alien come about? How did all Um, that begin? So, so my first couple, okay, well, I guess it was like my first real year of independent wrestling. If you look on Wikipedia, it says my debut was in like June of 2017, which is not true. It was Mm. November of 2016, six months after I started. And I was off for two months because I broke my heel. So just saying so now we can update your wikipedia article yeah. by referencing this podcast thank you thought, wikipedia thought, yeah. this is me i tell this to people all the time they're like oh you debuted in june of 2017 i'm like no it's been around longer <laughs> <laughs> well well let's talk about that heel injury a little bit first okay. since uh since we're there like what happened you said you were off for two months after that yeah uh so i you know the the one-legged moonsault that i do off the apron sometimes yeah. That was my old beam dismount. Ah. So I was just practicing it for fun. Uh, and, you know, in wrestling schools, there's not, like, sufficient padding on the outside. So I was just doing it so it landed. And I stuck the landing, and I split my heel in, in, in half. Like, like completely in half? So it, it was it – was, everything was in my – it everything nothing came out <laughs> nothing but, spills out <laughs> yeah it, and it was all there but right. it so you know how uh if you're like chopping wood you put a like a wedge in and then you hit that to split it evenly that's yeah. what yeah. my bones did inside my foot <gasps> so i split my calcaneus bone in half oh, oh my god yeah. jesus yeah and you're only out, out for two for, months yeah because i'm stupid 
<laughs> I, 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 was, I was still working all the time. And I, I mean, only like two days a week. Uh, but I, um, I wasn't supposed to be walking on it. Like, you know how, like, if you break your ankle, they'll give you like a walking boot or something mm-hmm. like that. I wasn't allowed to have that because it was my heel and you need that to walk. So I need to be off of it in order for it to heal properly. Um, also I was very lucky that none of the cartilage in my foot was damaged. So I didn't need surgery and I won't mm-hmm. have arthritis later in life. So praise the Lord. Bonus. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was just somehow, I, that's how you know you stick a landing, is that you split it perfectly and you don't cause any other damage to the surrounding <laughs> tissues. 10.0. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, so my orthopedist, he he would always like yell at me because I broke through three casts because I kept walking around on it because I didn't have any pain after like two weeks. So I just kept walking around on it and mm. uh, I broke through three of my casts on the bottom of the foot and I had to get it recasted a couple of times. But it was pretty much like exactly two months. And the day after I got my cast taken off, I was back in the ring. Because that's wow. how like excited I was. And like that's and I remember I I was only three months into training at that time. So I still wrestling was so new to me. And I showed up to every single practice. I sat and watched every single time. Uh, I went to every single show, helped out as I could. And that's when my trainers and a lot of people really took notice of how badly I really wanted to do this because a lot of people, when they're injured, they only show up a few times or whatnot. They Mm -hmm. usually stay home and rest. But I was there every single day doing as much as I could, being yelled at to sit down because I was just impatient. Um, (laughs) So that's that's kind of, I guess, what proved to myself and what proved to everybody else that I really believed in myself and that this is something I really am interested in making a part of my life now. So yeah. it, it, it's it called very... work ethic, girl. Some yeah. people have it. Some people don't. I know. And there's no substitute for it. How about those for two cliches? Well, that's true. I mean, it really yeah. is mm-hmm. coming from the old guy here in the group. It really is. Yeah. Okay. So. Talk about the alien character, how you develop that. How did that all come about? All are right. you a fan? Are you a fan of Star Wars, Star Trek? I've never seen either. Boo. I've, I've actually just a really big science nerd. Yeah. Believe it or not. I support yeah. this. I support that was, um, I, I took every single science class that I could in school, like literally every single thing. I took biology, genealogy, uh, marine biology. I even went to summer school for fun just to take a marine biology class because that's how much I loved it. And in my high school, we actually have um, a planetarium. So we would take uh, we would take little kindergarten school field trips to the high school to go to the planetarium. But it was just like so fascinating to me. And for like my birthday, I would get at home science kits because they dork. And uh, so for a while, when I uh, first started wrestling, I was just I went by the name Liza Viero, and I was just kind of like I don't know what I'm doing. But my middle name is Elizabeth. And my mom's maiden name is Soviero. So that's how I got Liza Viero. Hmm. Um, but, you know, it wasn't really not working. I was I was getting work and I was able to do stuff. It just wasn't really like a character that was good. So I decided like, you know, I'm a little bit weirder than a lot of people realize. You don't and say. I, <laughs> sure, this is my story. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like. I know I'm a little bit weirder and I never really fit in any specific group of people. And it was like when I was in school, like high school and everything, it was kind of like, you know, no one really wants to get a chance to get to know you until they do start to get to know you. And then you, they realize that you're so interesting and you have so much more to offer than what you just lead people to believe. So in a way it's almost like, you feel alienated from everybody. And I know that's like a weird play on words, but it's kind of like, you know, no one wants to believe aliens are real until someone can prove something about it. And no one cares to look into it more until there's facts to be known or like things to research. So I kind of feel like in a weird way, it's a weird play on how I've always been perceived in life where like no one really ever cared to get to know me until Mm. I had something interesting to say or I had something to offer that interests them and you know that's kind of like what aliens are in a way so I was just kind of like 
why not just play up how odd I am? Because as you say, as you guys know me from being around, I just sit around and I make weird faces all day and I just react <laughs> Mm-hmm. in the stupidest ways and I, I just don't I have no control over my body sometimes with <laughs> the things I do <laughs> so wait till I'm you like get a, older uh, <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. no. <laughs> you know Chris you, you say that but really sometimes when you approach you you you, you really don't know what you're going to get I know you know <laughs> I, like, I like to keep people on their toes yeah you, you do a good job of that great or like how recently <laughs> I showed up to the locker room with pixie sticks because i was like you get your sugar rush but you're not having the pit of candy in your stomach before you wrestle like who thinks like that me (laughs) i do (laughs) who orders who gets bulk bags of pixie sticks me i was actually really jealous of your pixie sticks i have so many i'll bring a whole bunch more please please yes We'll just be eating pixie sticks. Pixie party. Yay. I love it. (laughs) Okay. So you've wrestled on the indie scene and you've done a lot of intergender matches, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, First of all, how do you like those and how they've been received? Uh, You know, there's always people that are kind of like, oh, it's not believable, blah, 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 blah. But like, I'm a bigger, not, I'm not like, nyla big but i'm a bigger girl compared to a lot of girls on the independence right. and or even in wrestling in general and you know i've wrestled and trained with pretty much only guys and it's like there's been very little girls or girls come and go from the creative bro school and there have been times where i've been the only girl at training so i'm so used to training these guys and i learned not to be disrespectful to any women that i've ever wrestled but I realized very early on when I was still just wrestling women that I had to be the one leading a lot of these matches to not just make it make sense, but people are just forgetful and, you know, they've been wrestling longer than me. And I kind of felt like I was still the one that was really in charge and like trying to push these other people. And like I said, not to be disrespectful because Mm -hmm. you don't get anywhere without those types of matches. So Mm -hmm. every single match I've ever had on the independence has, gotten me to where I am today and I'm extremely thankful for every single person I've ever wrestled but when it came to being able to wrestle guys I had someone to finally push me I had someone that I had to try to keep up with and I had someone that was gonna take the reins instead of me having to be the one in charge so it was just a different way and there's so many more men to wrestle in different varieties in men wrestlers on the independence. And there are girls where a lot of girls, you see a lot of similar styles and characters and gimmicks. And it's kind of like wrestling the same person over and over sometimes, but with guys there's, they've experienced most of the time so much more, had so much more variety of matches and they just have so much different experience and mindset that getting pushed to, keep up with those levels and starting to think like that I started being able to incorporate that into my matches with women and try and push them a little bit more so now I have different I just have so many different uh varieties of things that I can do and different ways to be pushed so I think being able to prove that I can keep with those guys and sort of sometimes outshine those guys kind of has given me my little bit of edge that I guess people fear and I pick up big dudes sometimes I've picked up Dan Moff I picked up Beefcake which I know some people that are going to be watching or listening don't know, but look up those matches on YouTube. Those are like 300 pound men that I've had on my shoulders because mm-hmm. I'm big. You got mega strength, girl. I know. It's weird. It's alien strength. I don't know how it, it, I do it. Yes, it is. Uh, you, ah! you wrestled You wrestled on SmackDown Live a little bit over a year ago. Yes. Uh, how did that happen? And how, do, how were you contacted about working that match with the WWE? Well, luckily... Uh, trainer brian myers aka formerly known as kurt hawkins sure big big help on any of those uh any sort of extra work that we any of the creative pro people got anyone in the new york area and pat formerly a wwe producer as well he also he wasn't a producer at that time but unfortunately uh we got to do extra work for all of mania week that was actually the first time Aubrey ever refed my match. Oh, yeah, Shimmer. Yeah, that was the first time. And in that match, I don't think you know it, but the moonsault that I gave to AK, I, like, landed on my toe and I like, probably broke my foot. 
but I never got it checked out. So of course I, not. Yeah. <laughs> so like two days at so that was I think a a, a Friday maybe. That was earlier in the Mania week. So it was yeah, either Thursday or Friday. It was something like that. But then the next one of the next days, I had to wrestle three times in one day because Mania week bookings, and then uh, I had to do extra work for um, Mania and then Raw and SmackDown, and then for smackdown i did two practice matches because there was an odd number of girls and then i wrestled on tv so i wrestled three times with my foot like broken Jesus basically oh so God. when you talk about people with work ethic you talk about me because i have no <laughs> control okay you just nothing wrong with decisions. that so did I, you did you get offered a contract with them uh, nxt anything out of those matches so that shimmer match actually that um because uh why can't i remember his name canyon canyon was there mm-hmm. and i everyone was like oh he wants to talk to you blah 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 but i never got a chance to talk to him so i emailed him back and forth i've, I've never actually met him even when i was doing extra work he's uh, very uh, tall yeah I, I everyone looks the same to me i have no that's idea true. that's fine uh <laughs> <laughs> but uh so we got in contact after that and they were kind of talking about like bringing me in for a tryout, but it was more like a formality type thing. And I just wasn't available to do some of the tryouts. And they were like, oh, we're doing the tryouts in London. Why don't we fly you to the London tryouts? And I was just like, oh my, yeah, I know. Oh my God. I was like, sure, I'll do it. I think, but I can, I like, I'm only available for these. Like, I, I, I think I'd be available for the whole thing, but I'd have to be back real quick and stuff like that. And then it kind of just led to be like, you know, I kind of just want to hire you. So why don't we just send you a contract? So I didn't even have to do a tryout. And um, unfortunately with timing and everything, uh, I did my background check and there's a lot of things I'll, I'll give you, I'll say there are a lot of things that you don't expect it to get like flagged, flagged. Like there was one time I made a tweet about how uh, my old school got put on lockdown because some, because police thought that um, a, a suspicious person was carrying a gun or a weapon at a, at a gas station nearby the school. So my college went on lockdown, but it was just a guy holding an umbrella. Mm. And it, because it, I mentioned police in the tweet, it got flagged and stuff like that. So wow. it, it, yeah, it's very strict or like there was like a fire burn thing that got flagged one time. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's very, like, strict. So there was, like, a decent amount of things that got flagged that was just either, like, weird, just, like, out of context things, things that didn't make sense, or it's just kind of, like, uh, but... So I told them, I explained, like, you know, some of the stuff is stunt stuff, some of the stuff is, like, it's not really what you expect it, what you think it is. It's just, it just highlights words. It doesn't highlight the whole thing. You don't get the so, full context to it, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, so when I responded and i was like hey everything that that you said was inappropriate was deleted like you shouldn't be able to find anything this stuff was deleted before i even i think i deleted it and like did like the deleting after i had already had had submitted the background check so Mm. it might have done it but just that was just poor timing on my part um but then uh they were like okay we'll get back to you uh it could be a while though and during that while period AEW snuck their snuck their little way in and they're like we want to book you for a dark match and then I was like oh okay so I did that and then the contract offering with AEW happened and then I re- I sent an email out to WWE and I was like hey um unfortunately I have these other priority or I have another offer that works with my overall life schedule a little bit better because I'm also a massage therapist and I would still be able to do that. And I had just got my license like that year. So I was like, I kind of still want to, I don't want to waste that, that I just went to school for two years for. Um, and yeah. And they, they responded with something like, Oh, before like, Oh, what are the other offers before you make anything? Like, don't, don't accept anything. And I'm like, you don't own me. <laughs> and even, <laughs> even uh, my trainer was like, um, even my trainer was like, just send them like a sorry, not sorry text like a message like just let them know like like you don't have to go back and forth with them just kind of be like sorry but no thanks type thing and i think my biggest fear about going with aaw as opposed to wwe at first was that you know both my trainers work for wwe would i have their blessing 
to go here when I have an offer with the company they work for. And they were both like, it's a much better fit for you. Just go for it. So once I got their blessing, I was like 100% peace of mind that I was making the right choice. So it's just like, okay. So, oh, cool. yeah. Yeah. All right. That's so coming up, we're going to hear more about how the alien landed in AEW. This is AEW Unrestricted. We're talking to the alien, Chris Statlander. Talked a little bit about her background, how she got into wrestling, WWE, and then getting in contact with AEW. So you said you were booked for a dark match, which I think was a tag match. It was you and Swole versus Riho and Britt. Yeah. And then I remember you came to training that day because Dustin runs training every Wednesday. And it's like, oh, cool. Stats here. This is awesome. Great. Yeah. And then like... Talk us through the day. <laughs> oh, I, I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> it was weird because I was so used to like the big scary doing extra work for WWE and AEW wasn't like that at all. And I was just like, oh, I feel like this is like a place that's like super relaxed. And I guess I, w- I was nervous. Like you always get nervous going into a new setting, but it wasn't like as intimidating because like there's so many people that I knew at AEW from the ind- independence and people that have worked and stuff before. And going to the training, uh, you know, it was, it was training. I mean, like I said, like I my the training that I'm used to at Creator Pro was a lot different because there's like no girls involved. So, so not that it's not intense and like, informative of what we do with Dustin but it was just kind of like I, I I didn't know what to, what to expect so I just went in there open mind uh ample body to be thrown around type thing <laughs> just <laughs> just go just go with the flow type thing and like I had been kind of used to like you know not being a big wrestling fan growing up like I don't get as starstruck with like wrestlers so I think that's a good thing but at the same time I don't know who everybody is all the times and that's not a good thing <laughs> so I feel really bad about it I don't and I, either it's okay yeah high five. <laughs> but um uh you know I think I've probably seen Dustin before at a WWE extra work and it's cool to hear everyone's thoughts and like to be able to be like wow like i'm working with these people now and they're hearing hearing what i have to say and they're here to help me improve so it's cool to like it's just it's just a such a cool thing to know that like in such a short amount of time like i get to be working with such legends sometimes Mm -hmm. and um do you go back and look at you go back and look at some of the stuff like some of the gold dust stuff now I wish I could say I did. I mean, like, I I know, I know I'm aware of a lot of it. And I have people and friends that yell at me all the time from Creator Mm -hmm. Pro that are just like, she knows nothing. She has no idea. I bet you she walked up to Jericho and was like, hey, how long you been working, kid? And I'm like, (laughs) I'm not stupid. Like, I know. I like, I know who Jericho is. I know who pretty much everyone that we work with is. But, Mm -hmm. uh it's it's just kind of like i i think i was mostly nervous about making a good impression but then the second i got there every single person that was there that i knew like aubrey and i was just like oh yeah you're pretty much like hired and i was just like can i like wrestle first before we make this assumption i'm terrified (laughs) so that's kind of how it was it was it was like a very like lax day even though internally i was just like i gotta you know I have to make a good impression because if this is a company that's interested in me and wants to use me, you know, make a good impression, make them someone that they want to work with. And even though everyone was just like, yeah, you're fine. Don't even worry about it. You can, you could literally like vomit in the ring and you'll be hired. And I'm just like, probably I would say that's probably correct. I was just like, okay. Okay. (laughs) We'll see about that. If we vomit in the ring, it would be a memorable moment. Yeah, and then yeah, I'd have to be hired. So I should have done right. that. I should have right. done that. You didn't have to. It was fine. Well, let, let's talk about working with some of the uh, some of the other uh, women in our division, like Britt and Sheeta, mm-hmm. the Priestley. Uh, you've you've had matches with with each and uh, tag teams, and uh, just talk about some of those. So what's funny is that pretty much everyone at AEW, besides Penelope is people that, and swole a little bit is people right. that I've never gotten a chance to work with ever yeah. in the ring. So it's a lot of new experiences for me. So it's really actually 
very exciting getting to see how your chemistry is with these people and like getting to bond with them and get closer with them because when you haven't had the chance to do so on the independence so it's cool how like working for a new company even though it is a bunch of independent talents that were independent talents at the same time you were it's still bringing you new stuff so uh i have never wrestled in japan prior to or prior to aw i haven't really gotten a chance to go international besides canada um the one time i was supposed to go to england uh was the day that the thomas cook airlines shut down so i didn't have a flight yeah my (laughs) flight got canceled and i couldn't go so uh that was really hard time uh very upsetting but uh, other opportunities uh to go international never really just happened because i was so busy in america um but yeah, so getting the chance to work with people like Sheeta and Riho, it's it's really cool for me. It's a new experience for me, and it's cool to test your abilities in those new environments with new people and in a new setting too. Like doing it all for TV, it really helps you like grow pretty fast as a person, as a performer. So I think it's been very, it's been challenging, of course, uh, but it's also been extremely fun and extremely rewarding and it's just nice to have people that want to work well with you what would you say is like the biggest difference between wrestling on the indies and wrestling for aew commercial breaks yes oh my god (laughs) i hate that i hate it it's like we're commercial break but we're not really commercial break yeah it's like i'm so used to like just like i'm i it helped honestly Yeah, like, honestly, TV has definitely helped me, like, plan out times with, like, calling matches in my head. But, like, trying to incorporate a double down or, like, trying to incorporate, like, exactly when to time it all out for that commercial break, you're just, like... And then when you're in a commercial break, it feels like 10 minutes as opposed to, like, the two minutes that it is. So I'm like, this is the whole match. It has to be in this commercial break. Why Why is this happening? So it's just... (laughs) That, that's the biggest struggle is honestly just trying to plan your match around commercial breaks for me. When you wrestle so long in the independence, and I, I don't mean like years and decades on the independence, and then you go and you start wrestling on TV and you start wrestling in front of a lot of different people, there's a lot of things you got to do differently as well. Yeah, for sure. Maybe it's, not. <laughs> I, I mean, there is. Uh, yeah. I, I try not to like make a big change because i know i got to AEW based on what i was doing on the independence mm-hmm. and right. why would i change what i'm doing for a tv audience when most of the time they don't know who i am or they're watching because they have seen me do what i can on the independence so i don't think necessarily there needs to be a thing that changed besides just like pacing of what you do and sure. like knowing got when it. to build those things but I, I personally am one who believes in there's no such thing as a day off, even if it's in front of 20 people. Like, they're here, they're paying their money to see you. Why wouldn't you want to go out there and be the best that you can? you got to practice how you want to perform. And Hell yeah. It's like, it, it never made sense to me, people who were like, oh, it's a night off. Like, you're working. You shouldn't have a night off. It's you, You're going out there to put on the best performance that you can because people want to see what you can do. And... It's just, that's, that's laziness to me. And, you know, I get it if you're not really trying to get places anymore and you want to have a day, a night off and you've been bumping for 20 years and your bump card's full, go right ahead, take the night (laughs) off. But like, if someone that I have to work with thinks it's a night off, they are in for, they're, they're, they're not going to be happy. You're, you're stiff. After. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, stiff. I'm super stiff. I'm super stiff. I'm super stiff, and I'll it's make not, you run. I'll make you run not, real hard. And I'm yes. sorry. Oh my god. Strong but, style. Strong, strong style. Strong style. That's what. You, uh, so now uh, you've got this great athletic background. You've you've been in the independence, and now you're in AEW. And I know where it's a quarantine time for many of us. And um, what's your uh, what's your regiment like these days? Working out. What is what? What's your day like? Uh, I usually end up working like three to four hours a day because okay. I, I write up my workouts and I'm like, Oh, this doesn't seem too bad, but it's like a warm up. Then I have like an Olympic style lift section that I have to work on. And then I have like my 
bodybuilding section part of my body part that I have to work on. And then I do my like conditioning that I do at the end. So it ends up being like four hours and I'm dead. But that's pretty much all I have to do right now. Grocery I shopping when I can. I suddenly feel like I'm slacking. <laughs> It's, you are. Uh, I, I, ha- I was like, I, I was doing two hours a day. Damn it. <laughs> I uh, I woke up late today and I was going to try and work out before we did this. But like, you probably, you probably can't see it. But like, this Oh is... my God. Oh my God. Do you always write these out? Have you always done this? Uh, It's something I started doing more recently. Oh wait, that wasn't even the whole, th- my warm up wasn't in that one. Oh my God. So oh, okay. It's like. That's so long. I know, and I'm like, oh, this doesn't seem that bad, but like, this is I have I have nothing else to do, so I'm just gonna destroy my body at the yep. gym because I can't do it in a ring all the time. For people listening to the audio version of this podcast, like, check out the video because there's there's a giant list on uh, yeah. Stats phone. I'd, I'd read it all out to you guys. We'd uh, be that, here for uh, like an hour. <laughs> I know it'd be an hour just reading it out, but yeah, there's and like... you, you you type this up on your phone, right? Mm-hmm. Oh okay, God. you need an Alexa. No, I don't. And she can she can do the list for you. No, I don't. My mom has an Alexa. I don't want it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I guess that's an old people's thing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, okay. I like to write it up myself because I'm like accountable for what I have to do. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I can make edits to it and change it as I go. If I realize like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely not getting six sets of this in. Like I can tone it down a little bit or I can uh, modify it as I go so I can take notes for when I rewrite my workouts for the following week. Do you save routines and then like redo ones that you've previously liked or do you just like take stuff from previous ones? Is it it always different? I I try to change it up every week uh, every single body part that I do because I get real bored and then I also get like real excited because I I, like look up workout videos all the time on my phone. That's something I've been doing a lot and I'm like, ooh, I want to incorporate this. I want to incorporate this. I need to do more mobility stuff. Let's put these things in here. And then I just, I try to make a list in my head of all the things that I want to try and incorporate. And I have to plan that out, but still keep things that I like to do. So I end up changing up uh, my workouts all the time, actually, Damn. just to keep it interesting. Yeah. So I'll, I only write out my workouts for the week. Like this week, I think on like Monday, I wrote out Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then I'll redo it again on like Sunday for the following week of like what what body parts I want to work on, what uh, Olympic lifts I want to focus on that day, and conditionings that I got to do. That I'll focus my conditionings based on the body part I'm working. I'm motivated just hearing all of this. So I'll help you out. Yay! I'm not even a personal trainer. I just have been spending so much time in quarantine just like researching and studying and like trying to self-teach myself that it's just become not a passion of mine because like I get excited writing it up but then doing it I'm like ugh. and then whenever (laughs) whenever I make my boyfriend do them with me he's he tells me he's like I hate you so Hmm. much oh yeah so I I can't help it I like I tell him everyone all the time like I would never be a personal trainer because the way my brain works is that there's no off button. So my work that's why my workouts are four hours long, because I just don't have any self control when it comes to my training, as you guys have heard from what I've done in my previous in my previous time. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I uh, it says here that your favorite superhero is Deadpool. Yeah. And I would ask why, but I think pretty much if you listen to this podcast, you know why. Yeah, that question's <laughs> kind of been answered. <laughs> I yeah. think it has. <laughs> I'm a big fan of funny. Yes, you are. A little bit. Um, when, when you when you paint up before you go out, is there any rhyme or reason to the paint you put on your face, or or you just go with it that day? Uh, the colors. Yeah. Yeah, the colors. Uh, I usually just try to be a little matchy matchy. Kind of cute. <laughs> so whatever your gear looks like that day. Yeah. See, hey, I girl. wanted. See, I wanted to like be like, ooh, I'll do like blue when it's like I'm a baby face or I'll do red when I'm angry and I'll do black when it's like oh. I wanted to do that. But then I would like run out of paint real quick because I'm a baby face all the time. <laughs> well, so, then you don't get to switch it up if you just like, I know it's to, like, annoying. It's boring. And I changed but, and on the indies. I would change the color I do for my like makeup all the time. So I just would try to inc- make make it match and then it didn't look anything like it. So it's kind of just whatever paint I had with me on certain days the only one time that like I did something like that that made it made sense um I was in at a company called Limitless Wrestling uh 
me and Ashley Vox had feuded for like two years almost. Um, the first time we feuded, we had an unsanctioned match. Uh, then we kind of like made amends and then uh, led to another feud, which was the first ever women's main event of women's wrestling and their mm. first time streaming live. And it was, I called it a last creature standing because she's like the real catch a fish and I'm an alien. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that day I dressed in like all black, like ripped jeans or wore uh, a black crop top and I did like black makeup and only black face paint. And I was like, I'm dressed for her funeral because I'm going to kill her. So that was the only. S- I think I saw that match. Did you guys peel back the the canvas? And start doing yeah. like pile drivers on the on the wood. Yeah, I took a, I took a destroyer on the exposed board. Yeah, definitely seen that one. Awesome match. Stupid. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, that was uh, uh, that was the only time I really got a chance to like actually take the time and like put a deeper meaning into like why I was dressed like this. Uh, most of the time, it's just kind of like, oh, let's just make it match and make it look like it. I I am actually somewhat put together for once, <laughs> but. And yeah, if you look in that match, I didn't get very good color, but Dustin's always like, oh, you girls would never gig. And so I'm like, Dustin, I've done it three times already. <laughs> Dustin's, <the best. laughs> Dustin's always telling us, like, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Oh, I, don't yeah. like, I know. I've done it thrice. Yeah. Thrice. That's also so, one of my favorite words. <laughs> it's very apparent that you, uh, you can work through injuries. You've got a great athletic background. You're very tough. And you've done a lot of great things in your career. Are we going to see uh, Chris Stantlander come up with a different move or a different maneuver that we haven't seen before? Are you working on anything? Well, I have a move that I haven't been allowed to hit yet. Okay. Mm. As per Kenny's request. Ah, uh, I know. Oh, I know okay. Yeah. yeah. Aubrey knows what it is. Yeah. I'll, I'll right. tell you, Tony. Okay. Because we don't know when I'll be able to hit this move. But, okay. But uh, my good old area 451 to yeah. 450, mm-hmm. I can hit that uh, only twice in my life. Have I ever over rotated and bashed my face onto the mat? That's a pretty good track record. <laughs> well, yeah, oh, yeah out of all the times that I've done it, only twice, and I've done it a lot. So yeah. I'll take it. I think it'll uh, be interesting when it finally like busts out. I think people are going to be real excited about it. Yeah, because you don't so, tend to do like the flippy shit, like even the the new like top uh, turnbuckle flip Daniel Bryan esque thing that you're doing now. Like, yeah, I, I remember I saw you busted out. I'm like, whoa, she's a tie flyer now. <laughs> I know. See, I can always do like high fly things. Like one thing I've never been afraid of is going off the top rope, really, because I've done 50 foot high falls in stunts. And Mm -hmm. the mentality with stunts is kind of like your body knows what it's doing. Don't think about it. Just go. Mm -hmm. Then you just go and you just don't do it. And then you just do it. And then you're like, oh, yeah, my body did know what it was doing. Weird. So that's kind of it's a blessing and a curse mentality to have. For sure, because you <laughs> know, <getting> hurt. <laughs> yeah, I could get hurt. I probably do hurt a lot more because of it. But hey, I get to do cool things. So yeah, so that's that's my my 450 is one thing I haven't hit yet, but is am planning on to eventually. Uh, I probably have a lot of moves. I can do a lot of things, but uh, sometimes I feel like not everybody wants to take everything. Uh, so I try to be like considerate to them and not force everyone to take all my stupid stuff like i i, make, I drop people on their head for my finish so uh, yeah that's a good one that, that, that's a that's a <laughs> that's kind of pushing it already I, I like to say so i i have a bunch of things that i can do i usually try to keep my moves set to things that are exclusively me or like a little bit different just because that's just how i like to work i don't like to do the same things that everyone else does and i like to surprise people because of my size and my stature people don't always expect me to do the flippy things or i'm i'm not the biggest person but i can do a lot of power things and like mm-hmm. so i like to just mix it up as much as i can because it's it makes it more interesting and uh it just proves to people that i have a lot more potential in me than they would ever actually realize yeah it's awesome. You're you're very uh, different. You offer a lot of different things. You're just one of like the most interesting people I've met in wrestling. Absolutely, yeah. You and make I'm, it interesting to call a match. You make it interesting to know you behind the scenes too. So thank you. Oh yeah. man, yeah. Thank you for coming on today. This was so great. Uh, thank you for having me. Yay! Well, Chris Ten, thank you for joining us on AEW Unrestricted, uh, the official podcast of AEW. Just a reminder: you can subscribe. 
to AEW Unrestricted for free. Free, 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 free. Wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Aubrey Edwards. This is Tony Schiavone. I'm Tony Schiavone. No, you're not. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Anyway, and Wednesday, tune in to TNT and watch AEW Dynamite, 8 o'clock, 7 central. This was fun. Let's, Chris, you owe me pixie sticks. I know. I will. I got okay. you. Awesome. Thanks, girl. <laughs> <laughs>